Hello everyone, uh, today we will be talking about appendicitis. Uh, appendicitis is basically an inflammation of the appendix, which is a couple of inches of tube of tissue that extends from the large intestine. And it usually results from obstruction, inflammation, and definitely an infection. Okay. Now, appendicitis is a medical emergency, which means that it needs surgery to uh, remove the appendix, okay? And if left untreated, an inflamed appendix will eventually burst, or what we call perforate, and it can spill infectious materials into the, the abdominal cavity, which can then lead to peritonitis, which is a serious inflammation of the, the ab abdominal cavity lining, and, and this can be fatal, okay? Now, let's look at the symptoms of appendicitis. Now, dull pain near the navel or uh, upper abdomen that becomes sharp, as it moves to the lower right of the abdomen is usually the first sign, okay? So for the NCLEX exam, try to remember the what we call McBurney's point, which is basically the name given to the point over the, the right side of the abdomen that is one-third of the distance from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus or the navel area of the body, okay? And basically this point roughly corresponds to the, the common location at the base of the appendix okay where it kind of um, connects with the cecum right now also there would be for uh, more symptoms there would be a loss of appetite there would be nausea and vomiting uh, definitely abdominal swelling and there can be a fever a high fever and severe abdominal cramps okay so how do we diagnose um, our patients with appendicitis well it can be sometimes tricky because the symptoms of appendicitis like I mentioned before are frequently very vague and very very extremely similar to other problems so uh, several following several tests are, are gonna be usually used to uh, help make a better diagnosis and that includes uh, abdominal exam to detect the inflammation right uh, there would be a urine test to rule out uh, a UTI or a urinary tract infection the physician can also do a rectal exam and uh, a blood test can be done to see if there's an infection in the body okay and also uh, a CT scan and or uh, ultrasound will also be done so how do we treat our patients with appendicitis like I mentioned before surgery is going to be needed to remove the appendix uh, and we call this appendectomy and it's the the standard treatment for almost all cases of appendicitis now generally if appendicitis is suspected, the doctor will quickly remove the appendix to, uh, to avoid the rupture, right? And if the appendix has formed uh, an abscess, you may have two procedures that can be done. One is to drain the abscess of uh, pus and fluid outside the body, and the other one would be to remove the appendix. So those are your only two options. Now remember with appendectomy, antibiotics are given uh, before appendectomy to fight possible peritonitis or other infection and general anesthesia would usually be given and nowadays usually the appendix is removed through laparoscopy which is just a four inch incision done uh, in the stomach now after the appendectomy post-op as the nurse you gotta make sure to watch the patient for signs of an increased pain in the abdomen or uh, especially blood in the vomit or in the urine uh, redness in the incision area or a high fever because uh, any of these signs can trigger a major issue therefore the physician should be prompted as soon as possible okay now this is just a quick short review thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate it and I wish you guys the best in your exam I know you guys will do well thank you and God bless hey guys today I want to talk about gastrointestinal diseases now when we talk about gastrointestinal diseases we basically refer to Diseases involving the gastrointestinal tract, right? Namely, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and, and the large intestine. And also, don't forget our um, accessory organs, right, of digestion, which includes the liver, the gallbladder, and more importantly, the pancreas, right? Don't forget that that's part of the GI system, too. Now, let's talk about a few diseases that we might encounter in our exam, and that would include Crohn's disease and uh, ulcerative colitis. Now, those two are major NCLEX diseases, so make sure to take note of that, okay? Now, let's begin and go over Crohn's disease. Now, with Crohn's disease, it's, it's what we call an inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, right? Now, what it basically means is that it can affect 
any part of the gastrointestinal tract from, from the mouth all the way down to the rectum. But with this disease, it specifically usually affects primarily the small intestine or the ileum, right? Now, now the symptoms with our patient can include abdominal pain. And this is very important because what do you know what the reason is for this pain? Basically, it's due to the inflammation right of the of the lining within the digestive tract which obviously can lead to abdominal pain and and keep in mind be mindful that this inflammation can also lead to severe diarrhea which can be bloody right and with all these complications it leads to fatigue and weight loss to our patient therefore the symptoms like i mentioned before can include abdominal pain right due to the inflammation the patient can also have severe diarrhea, which can be bloody, and the patient will be fatigued and can have some weight loss, okay? Now, remember when I mentioned that it affects primarily the small intestine or the ileum? Now, this basically means that the pain would then be manifested as a lower right area abdominal pain in our patient, right? Again, since it affects most commonly the small intestine or the ileum, therefore, a major symptom for a patient with Crohn's would, would therefore be a lower right area abdominal pain okay so make sure to take note of this because this can be very important information for your NCLEX exam now there are no medications or surgical procedures that can cure Crohn's disease okay I repeat there is no medications or surgical procedures that we can do to cure our patient with Crohn's but there are treatment options okay there are treatment options that can help alleviate or lessen the symptoms and hopefully maintain remission and hopefully prevent relapse in our patient. Now, important treatment information that you have to know would include giving your patient anti-inflammatory agents or basically anti-inflammation drugs, right? Now, the goal of this treatment is obviously to control inflammation, right? Since less inflammation leads to a relief in our patient's symptoms such as the abdominal pain, right? Which can hopefully, hopefully decrease the diarrhea and the rectal bleeding too. Now, a common drug that you might encounter in your exam would be sulfasalazine, right? And again, it's an anti-inflammatory agent. And the side effects can include nausea and vomiting and some gastric distress. And this is because it does react with the stomach lining with our patient, okay? Now, corticosteroids such as prednisone can also be given to our patient. And corticosteroids in relation to Crohn's what it does is it basically suppresses the immune system and the immune system response in the body, which in some way plays a role with the inflammation, okay? Now, I will go over other important topics and other diseases in the next few videos. Now, I want to thank you so much, guys, for spending your time. I really, really do appreciate it. Knowing that you have learned something that can help you hopefully pass your NCLEX. And if you do feel that you want to help support me with continuing doing these videos, just please visit me in my website at www.allnursingnotes.com. Again, that's www.allnursingnotes.com. And there's an NCLEX course in there that's available that has helped hundreds and thousands of uh, NCLEX takers pass their exam. And again, thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best of luck in your exams. I know you will do great. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.